The swish pattern is one of those famous techniques in NLP that has created quite a lot of publicity <laughs> because it's reasonably dramatic. And it's dramatic in the sense that you get quite animated, quite active as the practitioner or coach. Because you're going to sort of throw the new positive representation at the client as a way of helping them to install it. In the map across, your installation was make it like that, make it like that, make it like that, but clumsy almost. Now we're not going to do that. We're going to take the new representation and we're going to go and whip it straight into them. So it's and it's this kind of startling effect, and that's why I say it's dramatic. It's not dramatic in any other sense. Okay, the swish technique is useful to change unwanted behaviors. It can be a useful part of the changing of really heavy unwanted behaviors, like addictions and bad habits and things like that as well. When I say that, part of means it's nothing I would ever do as a standalone technique, expecting that after that, my drug addicted client no longer feels like taking drugs ever again and lives in a happy state for the rest of their life after one swish? No. In a famous swish pattern demonstration, Richard Bandler spent something like 50 minutes pre-framing and building up using some hypnotic language and getting the client ready for the swish. The swish itself takes three minutes or something like that. It's a very simple little technique. So that that demonstration highlights the value of an appropriate setup and pre-frame. Some of which I will demonstrate, but I won't take that long. I'd like you just to focus on learning the technique. The discussion around techniques, the languaging and so forth, we're getting to in the next couple of days, more than what you've done already. So we'll focus on the technique itself. The technique itself, without much around it, is useful for changing minor unwanted habits. The things you do that you prefer not to do nail biting and unwanted reactions to people and situations. When you get those horrible feelings that you don't want to have that result in you reacting in ways you don't want to react, pretty good for that. Whatever you chose for the map across, if you don't feel completely done with that issue, swish it. This is the first sort of official demonstration where somebody gets to sit up here with me. And if you weren't already aware, oh, this matches your shirt so well. <laughs> In fact, it's a purple chair, and those who come on hypnotherapy training will know why it's a purple chair, because great things happen in purple chairs. Nonetheless, great things do happen for demonstration subjects, because you get to experience a free bit of change work that I will facilitate, and you get to keep that change. So the swish is good for changing unwanted reactions to situations. Who has one and thinks, I'd like to be the demonstration subject for that? Oh, you are? I didn't mean to insert the suggestion. I would like to ask you, because I haven't yet, you got up so quickly, what I usually do before the demonstration subject actually gets up out of the chair is I, I check to see if what it is you'd like to raise is appropriate for the demonstration. Okay. It's Better late than never, though. So, would you like to tell me a little bit about what that challenge is? Um, I'm thinking work situation, um, what we were doing just now, but it's maybe a different context. But I'm working for a company that's employed a company that's employed us as facilitators. Yeah. And the communication is not very good between them and us. Yeah. So it. Um, it gets frustrating, and of the three of us, I'm the only one that ever really seems to speak up. But when I do, I get quite aggressive. So I go in like with big guns. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> what I'm kinds of guns are those? Uh, submachine. Submachine. Yeah. All right. Do they make? Do they do lots of damage? They do. Okay. How is the situation a real problem for you? Um, I don't feel good afterwards because I feel like I've overreacted, and I could have handled it better. And although I get the desired outcome. I'm not getting it in the way that I want to get it. And that I end up stressed in the process, and I could do without the stress in between. So. Okay, okay. So there's stress in between. Yeah. You'd prefer to handle the situation differently. Yeah. You do achieve your outcome, though. Yeah, but with tension. With tension, and you'd like to achieve it 
With no tension. With no... With a more peaceful... Okay. Relaxed, confident... Peaceful, relaxed, and confident. Okay, great. Thank you. I pause deliberately to give the client the opportunity to express it in her own words. It would have been easy for me to, to assume what she might have preferred to have in that situation. Don't do that. Okay. Peaceful, confident. Assertive. Assertive. All right. We're going to talk about peaceful, confident, and assertive in a moment. But for now, I am particularly interested in specifically that point when this becomes a problem for you, okay? And so I'm going to do a bit of timeouts from time to time to speak to the peanut gallery over here, okay? So that they know where we are in the process and they can follow along in their notes if they want to. So first of all, we're going to get the trigger of the problem. This is the first time you're going to experience the elicitation of a trigger. Listen to the questions that I ask to find the very first thing that fires the problem. All right. Thank you for that. <laughs> can you hear that? We're already cutting through. I can hear that. Yeah, yeah. we're cutting into that. We cut right out <laughs> soon. And you're going through your work day. Everything is kind of okay. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly there is this tension that you know. How do you know it's time to turn on the tension? Um, it just goes on like that. It just goes on it like that. It just goes on like that. And it's in my stomach and I can feel my whole body tense. Ah. And apparently I go quite pale as well. You go. <laughs> Others see that you go yeah. pale. You know because you I feel it here. Feel it. I can feel the tension draining from my face because I'm so tense. Okay, so you really know when you're having this. Yeah. And you can feel it right now, like that. Mm. Yeah, you can. That's very good. Thank you. Another little timer. That's cool, because what we know is I can check back afterwards in my test to see, is there any of that still to that degree of, what degree of intensity was that? I haven't even really associated you. But if you were in one of those really tense situations at work right now, as tense as it's ever been before, mm. you know, you, that's a good example you just came up with there. Because yeah. she went to visual remembered, you see, I know that. And that example that you came up with right there, if you go right into it now and you see what's going on and you hear and you get in touch with that color seeping mm -hmm. tension, not nice, I'm sorry to do this to you, but out of 10, a scale of 1 to 10, how bad is it? Heard that an 8. Oh, that's quite intense. So just delete that from your mind, it's not necessary. Thank you for the information. Like, do a proper job at completely clearing that screen. It's lovely when this afternoon sun kind of shines in through the leaves of the trees, different shades of green. Pretty, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Now, that thing. You've said it's just, but I know for sure that there's a something that does the and switches it on. It's not there and then suddenly it is. A picture. Whoa, there's a picture. I didn't have to ask about that. <laughs> what is that picture? Um, the picture is of things not going the way that I want them to go. So the picture is of me being ignored or not being communicated with or being blocked in some way. So I'm not being heard, I'm not being listened to. Okay, so you get that picture of you not being heard, not being listened to. Now, do you go around with that picture all the time or only is it at certain points it comes up? It comes up at certain points. At which point? In this situation at work, what's the point where that picture is triggered. When there's information that I get that indicates that it's possibly happening. You need to get information. Yeah. Certain information in a certain way to trigger that particular picture, I'm sure. What information and how do you get it? Um, it's usually feedback from the person and it's often, it feels like a feeling, but it's more something to do with the way that they look their body language. <laughs> How do I need to look and what body language must I have so that you can have that picture? I mean, or the other person at work for that matter. What's the kind of feedback? Because I could give you feedback, those are nice shoes, where do you buy them? <laughs> Does, did that evoke the no. picture? No, you need certain it's feedback. As a, how it do you know? It comes across as aggressive. It's someone that's kind of um, always authority. So it's always a boss, 
or someone that's trying to exert authority over me, and it's always then... I can't quite... Okay, here's how you will. When's the last time it happened? And who was it? And what was the tone? And what was the specific thing you saw? It was... Or heard? About six weeks ago, it was at a meeting. It was one of the many bosses that we have in this whole picture. The woman, um, she was... We were in a meeting and we were discussing something and something came up about our contract that no one had bothered to tell us, but then she kind of dropped into the conversation and said, oh, sorry, by the way, we've just decided to change your contract. And that was my, my trigger. And her body language was very much, I'm not going to discuss it. This is just the way that it is. And a very direct look as well. She was very determined, very, very confident in her approach and very confident in her side of the story. Okay. So, when you see her, that's right, mm -hmm. just like that, when you do, what is it about her? Do you see all of her, just her eyes? It's more her eyes. Uh -huh. <clears throat> do her eyes take up the whole picture? Most of it. Mm. And there's a, a kind of confidence to her whole look. It's more of an aggressiveness than An confidence. aggressiveness, okay. And as you see that image now, you're associated. Yeah. Yeah, I can tell. So, and I can tell because she's looking straight at it. She's there now, and she's feeling this feeling, and she's getting right into it. It's intense. She's associated. And as you're associated, looking at those eyes, mm -hmm. do you see that look and then hear her say something? Yes. Okay, so the look is first. And you, yeah. do you already know when you see that look, here it comes, or is there a possibility she may say something else that's sweet? I have a feeling. You already have, let me guess which feeling that is. <laughs> okay, so you've already got the feeling when the look comes. Yeah. So I know it's a visual trigger, the sound comes after. And when you see those eyes, color picture, black and white? Um, most of it's color, but her eyes are kind of black. There's no color around your eyes or your face. She's evil. <laughs> and how close is it? It's about that far. That far away. And how big are those eyes? About that big. Yeah. Okay, and as you see that there, the feeling. What feeling? It, it's the start of it. Is this really that thing? that then leads to that feeling. Is this the start of it? I think so. You think so? No, well, if, if, if she's looking at you in that way, and then she says what she says, and then she carries on, what's happening? Definitely trigger. Okay. Just delete that. Well done. Well done. You've done really well. That was the hard part. It's over. Okay. Hard part's over. Congratulations. Now comes fun part. Okay. Okay? Great stuff. Have you noticed just in the last five minutes since we've been chatting how the colors have changed in the leaves of the trees outside as the sun dipped down slightly? It's pretty, isn't it? Okay. Now, what we're going to do is I'd like you to tell me about that peaceful, confident state that you'd like to have. And can you tell me about what it is for you that really represents peace and confidence? Um, feeling relaxed feeling like there's no tension in my body, so my body feels relaxed. Okay, let me ask you like this. When you are relaxed, there's no tension, and you're peaceful and confident. What image represents that for you? Image of myself or image generally? Oh, anything you want. Myself walking on a beach. Yourself walking on a beach? Yeah. Okay, so it's yourself walking on which particular beach? Nahoon Beach. Nahoon Beach. Yeah. Beautiful. And as you're walking on Nahoon Beach in this situation, are you seeing yourself walking on the beach or are you there walking on the beach? I'm seeing myself walking on the beach. That's right, you dissociate it now because it's different than the previous associated one. So you see yourself walking on the beach, you're dissociated, and as you see yourself walking in the beach, you're walking, there's mm -hmm. movement. Yeah. Yeah. 
waves? Is it a wave you see? Yeah, it's, um, it can be quite rough, but sometimes it's quite calm, so yeah. medium-sized waves, surfers, dogs. Yeah. Do you walk near the water's edge or higher up in the soft sand? Close to the water. Close to the water. water. In the water, so you actually feel the coolness on your feet, except where you are, it's not that cool. Although it's not that warm either. It's You're not quite Durban, huh? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so Nahoon Beach, lovely. There you are. Any other sounds, any other aspects of that that are worth mentioning? Um, just background noises, people talking, people walking on the beach, children laughing, sound of the sea. Um, it's quite a quiet beach, but just beach sounds. Okay. And that feeling in your body is? Peaceful. Peaceful. Relaxed. Relaxed. Is there a kind of confidence to the way you're walking, perhaps? Um, I feel confident because I'm what I feel like in my element. Oh, okay. That's your element. <laughs> Perfect. Great. Okay, you can just let go of that one. Okay. Believes on the trees, whatever you like. Great. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to ask you to... Well, take, take this confident image, the peaceful mm. one, and just kind of shrink it down so that it's one little speck. It just kind of miniaturizes. Okay. It's just like a tiny little speck, the head of a pin. Okay. All right. And that's like right here now. So you don't really see much of what's in it. That's the way we'll reduce it. Okay. okay. Now I'd like you to call up that first image. <laughs> Those eyes. All right. Okay. And the shrunken one down right in the middle of it. Okay. So there's that first one and this miniature speck right in the middle of it. Now we're going to get interesting. What we're going to do is we're going to whoosh them out over the horizon. That's why your chair is where it is. So that you can whoosh them out over those trees into the blue sky beyond. Okay. And of course, as they both disappear into the far distance, this one is going to shrink and get small so that they become one speck off on the horizon. And what's going to come whooshing back really, really fast from over the horizon is only the enlarging, rapidly enlarging, one of you the way you want to be, walking on the beach. Okay. That's easy enough for you to do. Yeah. Okay. I'll do a breaker state like this between each time, and then we'll do it faster each time, and I'll say less each time because your unconscious mind will know what's going on. Okay. Super. So here we go. Are you ready? I'd like you to see that shrunken down image. Yeah of the resource state, you're walking on the beach. Yep. Inside of this one. This one. And now you're going to send them both out over the horizon. Whoosh! See them disappear over those trees there? Yep. Tiny speck disappears and what's going to come flying back super fast is just the way you want to be walking on the beach. Feeling peaceful, confident, super. For the rest of this exercise, I would like you to focus on this image. Okay. Forget about me. My hands will do things. I don't need eye contact. I'd like you to focus on your image rather. Right. Okay, super. So just delete that. Well done. We're going to do this a few more times. See that shrunken down image now, once again. Call up this representation. Now I don't know if you're seeing this any different from the way you did the first time, but that's not so important. And now you're going to take this and and what comes back is the way you want to be walking on that beach, those colors, those sounds, that confident, peaceful, relaxed feeling. Excellent. Just kind of clean that screen. Well done. Once again, call up that shrunken down miniature version of the resource state. Put it in the middle of that old image that might in some way already be changing in some way. I don't know how you're seeing it differently now, but take this and out over the horizon and back. There you are on your beach, confident, relaxed. Excellent. Delete that about two more times. Here we go. So there's that shrunken down one in the middle here of that one. That one, I don't know if it's starting to fade, gray out, become hazy or dull or anything. But I know that it might be changing in some way that's significant to you. And you can just take it now and notice that. Excellent. And now notice this. That's right, breathe into it. 
Well done. We'll just clear that. Excellent. When will you see her again? Um, I don't know, but there's several versions of her. Ah, okay. When will you see any one of those versions next? Uh, the next time I'm in Joburg, will probably be at the stage I'm not quite sure when. Okay. It just depends on our training schedule. Well, let's start like this. Um, if you think back to that old time. Yeah. And you think back to it now, in light of this, what do you notice? It's hard to picture her. It's hard to either. picture her? Yeah. Okay, so it's hard to picture her for now. Now, any one of her versions in Joburg next time, I don't know what they might do or how they may appear. But when you imagine a situation like those in the past that used to trigger that old feeling, now in the future, what do you notice? Um, it definitely doesn't have the same power. How are you responding to it now? I can feel the tension in my stomach is gone. You sure? Yeah. And when that tension has gone, how are you responding to the situation different from how you did? Confident. Relaxed. Really? Are you sure it's about that? Relaxed. Yeah. Are you confident about that? I am. You sure you're confident about that now? And as you're confident about that now, looking to another time in the more distant future perhaps, when you really get to put this to the test, how confident are you now about that going the way you want it to go? About 90% confident. About 90%? <laughs> 90%? Are you sure it's 90%? Could it be 91? 89? Could be higher. Could be higher even. All right. I'd like you to go with 90% confidence right now. That's right. And think about another time in the future where you are 90% confident and you're confident about being confident in that future situation. That's right. Now imagining being approached by one of those that used to have that old effect on you and notice what you do now. Yeah, laugh. <laughs> laugh. And you have something that you need to express at this point in time and how do you imagine doing that? more peaceful, more relaxed. Okay. You confident about that? I am. You sure? Okay, well done. Just one last thing, we're done. Okay. If you think back to that woman, yeah. those, those old, yeah. yeah, now, and, and really get in touch with it, that whatever it is there right now, there used to be something that you experienced in the past. Uh, is there a, is it worth measuring? Is there any, some kind of thing you can calibrate to there? Is there any kind of that old? There was an 8 out of 10 before, remember? Now you're 90% confident. So how does that translate into what was 8 out of 10 regarding that old feeling? It's more like a 2. Like a 2. Are you sure about that? Yeah. So you're confident about it being two? Yeah, I am. So as a confident person, you can just go ahead and <laughs> say what needs to be said? Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Are we done? <laughs> yes. Oh, super. Are you sure? Yes. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Oh, well, no, no. Thank you. <laughs> Questions? Is it always that dramatic? Was that dramatic? Yeah. Gosh, that was a mild one. <laughs> no, but was... I mean, would you... This... <laughs> yeah. It can be more dramatic. You didn't see as much of what you sometimes do see, which is the hands are coming towards the person and they're sitting here and they go... <laughs> and it's good when you do see that. It means it's really... Impressive. So when you whoosh. She did that from, from my angle. Yeah. yeah. There was yeah, a bit of it. The, the, the first, <laughs> first two you didn't, and then yeah. after that, like, there was like a real... It is a bit like a 3D movie, but like, things that's, like that. That's, that's why we do this. Yeah. That's exactly why we do this technique. Okay. 
Now, you want to sit out of the person's way, always in coaching, you never sit straight in front of them because it's too invasive. Huh? This kind of angle is a little bit exaggerated and because it's a little bit too apart maybe, but I do that specifically for the swish so that the client's not having to look at me, I want the client to look at an horizon, so I've set the chair up like that. That's what you always do if you know you're going to use a swish. And if you're in an office with no horizon, then have a picture on the wall that has a horizon. Okay. And so I'm doing that so that the client can focus on this picture of what's going there and not on me. I get myself out of the way. Well, because we're in a trance, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> I understand the difference between uh, the macrocross and the swish. I mean, I saw the swish and the swish arts and the but it almost felt like you were doing the map across. The map across is like a swish. The swish has a more dramatic effect of installing the change rather than saying, okay, change that similarity, change that similarity, change that similarity. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. Now so we're going... Similar. It's similar. Yeah, it's similar. quite different in that with this one for me, you've got two different images mm -hmm. that you're kind of swapping out with each other, whereas with the other one, you want to keep the first image, but just change the two amount of yeah. from yeah. information from the second one. Is that right? Um, no. For me, it feels like with the map across, I am going. And I'm doing the change. It's like I'm actually going there, into that mm -hmm. state. With the swish, it's like we've taken the situation, Gone. It feels like it's been taken outside. It's been taken for me. It feels like it's been taken like outside exactly. It's taken outside of you, and what gets brought back is the positive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So the other one. Okay. What comes back is the resource image, and what's most interesting about it to us as NLPers is the submodality that was elicited in that image. So what's, what it's telling the client's unconscious mind is not this, this. Not the unwanted thing in this demonstration's case. Not this one, that one. The walking on the beach one. Okay? And it's not about, okay, I get to imagine walking on the beach. My expectation is not that the next time Renee's in that situation that she's going to now start imagining that she's walking on the beach instead of anything else. No. It's going to be a pattern interrupt so that her old reaction doesn't fire. It's going to be a new coding at the unconscious level in terms of submodalities that inhibits the old reaction and tells the unconscious mind, not the old reaction, this feeling instead. And with that, with that image, could you attach anything? I mean, would you attach signs to it and everything? Or is it just an image? It's nice to get the client vividly associated with the resource image by asking about uh, what are the sounds and, and what feelings are associated with that. But if you think about how I elicited it, I said, because the client's looking for a resource state and we already had calm, peaceful and confident. Mm. I said, all right, as you think about that, what image comes to mind? So we already had the feelings. Mm. And then I asked about sounds, waves. But what was more important, and that's what I've said with uh, this modality that we're calling map across and swish, is the visual. Okay. There are other submodality techniques that do other things, but we're playing mainly with the visuals here. Or auditory. Did you hear when I was eliciting it, I was checking, because it was easy to assume at one point, okay, that woman says something in a yeah. certain way and that gets her going. And you could have gone, okay, so we've got it. It's the way in which it's said. But I was just checking, is there, what happens, what's the first thing you notice? The very first thing. She says, she says that, and I'm like, okay. And was there anything else? Did you see? And there was, the, she then described the look in the eyes of that woman mm -hmm. and... Renee was describing this appearance here, and I asked her, so does that precede what she says? And it was yes. So there was a look, and I checked, and I said, and where's that feeling yeah. at that point? And the feeling was, it was already the onset of the feeling. The trigger is the very first impulse, and it's normally something the person sees or hears. The trigger always be a visual, if it is an auditory trigger. How do you take an auditory picture? 
throw it out into the room. There's a picture associated with it. So it's whatever the picture is associated with it. So yeah. Okay. It's just that when I do my test afterwards, because yeah. I, I didn't ask her to now, in the future, imagine what, what that woman saying that. Because yeah. it wasn't important. What was important was those eyes. Yeah. So you're still going to get a picture that's associated with the sound. Say I never got the eyes. They didn't exist. It was just the tone of that voice that got her going, okay? And then I say, okay, as you hear that tone of the voice, what picture is associated with it? And that becomes the trigger picture that we swish okay. with the voice that is associated with that picture. So you ask questions about what, where, and how do you know now you've got the problem. What's the very first thing that you become aware of? You're going through your day, everything's fine, everything's fine, now you've got a problem. At what point did it tip? What was the very first thing that started the unwanted feeling, reaction? The very first thing that lets you know, ah, this is it. Clients are usually very unaware of that until you do the solicitation. And I'm still being, this is not getting nitty gritty. When we get to the HNLP model, we're gonna get more specific about nailing down that trigger. For now, I'd just like you to go out and ask, what's the first thing, get the picture, swish it. The technique itself, without much around it, is useful for changing minor unwanted habits. That's right, breathe into it. Well done.